Hi, this is Bob Sorrentino from Italian Roots and Genealogy, and I'm here today with Debbie Gertler, who is with FamilySearch.org, and we're going to do my free consultation. So thanks, Debbie. Welcome. Oh, thanks, Bob. It's good to see you this morning. Um, so the way this usually works is somebody makes an appointment, and within that form that they fill out for the appointment, they let us know what they want to get some help or some research strategy advice on. And so in your form, you indicated that you were trying to identify the parents of Maria Angela de Riso, and she was born um, back in the 1700s. And so honestly, most of the, the consultations that I have involve more recent um, people. And so I called in a little bit of help with my colleague, Suzanne Russo Adams, and who is more skilled at the ancient Italian. And she did a little bit of searching and found some wonderful things that I think that you're going to enjoy um, looking through. So one of the important things to remember when you're looking for ancestors in another country is to Google in the language of that country. And so that's exactly what we did. We Googled in Italian and we were able to find a will that was written by Maria Angela de, Ru de, Ru de Rosa's um, father. And so it identifies her as his, um, as her daughter, it identifies her as his daughter. And so what I'm going to do is what, and what I would recommend that you do is you take a look at this will. Somebody has been so kind to transcribe it because I'm sure this, the original handwriting might have been a little bit tough for most the average researcher to look through and to read. But in it, it clearly states that she is the daughter of the deceased Giuseppe de Riso. And so I'm, I think that this will help you to maybe advance your research on that line. And so I'm excited to be able to get that link to you so you can begin to look it over. So that's great. And, and in my research, um, I thought I found the Gennaro de Riso. Uh, it could have been Giuseppe. I'd have to go back and look. Um, but what, I mean, one thing I find strange about that is I'm guessing that he, there was no living son because very unusual for somebody in, from, a, you know, a noble family to leave a will naming a daughter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it seems to, it's, it, it is highly unusual. And that's what I would suspect. And it looks to me like in just the little brief um, look over that I've given of the will, there might have been a little bit of um, protest about that. And so maybe that's why um, they've taken the time to transcribe this um, wheel out just so that you can read. But it very clearly identifies her as the Duchess of Capricotta, which is information that you know from, from your own research and from research that you've had done by others. And so I'm suspecting it. It also mentions a codicil. So I'm thinking there must have been a little bit of protest around that. Perhaps um, other male relatives that weren't sons, but perhaps brothers or children of brothers, this is just a speculation on my part, may have protested that the, the property went to her and not to one of them as a male heir instead of, you know, his own daughter. Oh, so that's pretty interesting. Now, does it say um, what he left or, or what title that, that he had, if any? I I didn't go through and read through the whole wheel. Um, I'll confess that my Italian is not super great. I'm really good at the genealogical information, but the legal stuff, maybe not so much. So I would re I would highly recommend that you have somebody who is more um, familiar with that to, to read the information and see what you can find out. There is a Gennaro de Riso that's mentioned in here, um, but it sounds to me like he may be a grandson. So I would recommend that you uh, find your best Italian translator and look through it and see what you can, what you can glean from this. Oh, so that's, that's interesting. So maybe that's the Gennaro that I found and, and maybe, maybe he was the one contesting it um, because he was a, he was a male. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So he, he may well have been. But yeah, these consultations are, are basically designed to give you some research tips and some strategies and, and let you have the thrill of the chase. Oh, <laughs> uh, no, that, no, this, that, this is, this is, um, this is pretty big because I wasn't able to find anything 
remotely like this. So this will give me a, a good head start. And sometimes just knowing the right name of the, the, the father of somebody points you in, in the right direction. Um, but for anyone who does want to do a consultation, uh, what recommendations do you have? Because I know I filled out the form. What's the best thing for them to find out before they contact you or someone like you to do the consultation? Okay. Well, especially if you're doing Italian, make sure you're very clear on the name of the town. Um, we often get some of these, and I, I'll do, I do these consultations in English and in Spanish. And right now, you know, there's a, you know, you probably know this, there's a huge Italian um, diaspora in Argentina. And many of those consultations come to us and they just know perhaps Italy or they know the name of the province, but they don't have the name of the town. And that's really key. So make sure you do your home country, their research to identify well the name of that hometown, because that's going to be the key to helping us to get you into the right records to find the things that you're looking for. So make sure you've done your homework. And, and But if you don't feel confident that you have identified the town, we can also help with that. So, you know, not only just getting you into the Italian records, but in helping you identify perhaps where your Italian immigrant was from in the first place. We can give you um, places to look, record types to search that might help indicate that town. But it's really important that that you have, and I teach a class on it, you have you need to know four things. Obviously the name of the ancestor. You need to have a date of something that took place in the old country, whether it's a birth or a marriage. Um, you need to have um, the place, meaning the name of the hometown, but you also need to have a family connection in that back in that old country. So if I'm looking for Giuseppe de Riso in, Ita in Italy, I need to know, for example, the name of his wife, if he married there, so that when I find him in those records, I can say, oh, yeah, that's him because that's the name of his wife. Or that's him because those are the names of his parents. So you need those. Those are what I call my big four that you need when you're doing an immigrant research is the name, a, a date, even though it might be estimated, a place, exact place, like in a, a town, and then a family connection to positively identify him. Right. And I think I think one of the other important things to note is something that I haven't done, um, but I, I think um, that you know, researching in the language, even if you don't speak the language, I'm, I'm, I'm like you, I, I kind of, I could read the, the birth and marriage and death certificates now, but uh, actually doing that, you know, Google or Bing search in the Italian, Italian language may open up more doors than, than just doing it in English. Oh yeah, definitely. And uh, it, even in any of the languages that you're researching in, I found it is very much more helpful to Google in the language of, of that you're researching in, you'll, you'll get a lot more hints. And if you're using a browser like Google Chrome, once you find some things, you can always um, right click on the page and ask Google Chrome to translate it for you. It won't be a perfect translation as we know, but it'll give you the gist of the idea of what's going on there. So it, it's with all the technology we have now, it's really been wonderful to, to be able to have these resources and, and the, the helps that we get, it's really made our world a little smaller. Right. And so one last question, now that, you know, now that I know that there are or was for this um, one particular family, uh, a will, how would one go about searching for a will as opposed to a birth or a marriage or a death certificate? So generally documents like wills are created by notar notaries in the country. And so you would need to identify the note the notary that served the city or the area where your ancestor lived and the time period that he served. And then you'd have to find out which archive um, kept those records. Some places have notarial archives. Sometimes they're found in a provincial archive or a muni municipal archive. So you'd want to do a little bit of legwork to figure out where those notarial records are kept. Um, I've had more experience with the ones in Spain and they are generally kept in a provincial archive. Um, but there are notarial archives as well. So I, you'd want to identify that. And I, it would be important in this case because he's obviously got land. He's obviously very well to do. So you might, may find a wealth of notarial documents that will give you more information about him, his life, how they lived, um, those kinds of fun things that add meat to the story of your ancestors. Oh, so that's, that's really, really interesting. And uh, yeah, I mean, 
going back to the 1500s, um, a lot of my ancestors actually did come from Spain because one thing I learned was that when the Spanish came to Italy, uh, I didn't know this before, but there weren't a lot of Spanish nobles in Italy. So the Spanish nobles started marrying the Italian nobles. So the further back I go, I start seeing, you know, Aragona and Rivera and Sanchez de Luna and, and those families all that dispersed with the Italian families. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the great thing too about about the nobility is a lot of their genealogy, you know, people have been heavily interested in that. So you can find published genealogies in many places. And so it may very well be, and I've got a few more books, links that I'll be sending you that there may be more information documenting this family. And I would suspect because um, she was a nobleman's daughter, there may also be a marriage contract. It might identify what goods and property she brought to the marriage as well, which is a very common thing among among nobility. Kind of like your modern day prenup. <laughs> Yeah, right. Um, and uh, there is one on the Sorrentino side, which is like seven pages long or something like that. Uh, and and I had somebody translate it for me, and it was like, you know, everything you could think of, it was thrown in this thing. Um, and and if you could, because I've, on the Italian side, I've used the uh, Libra di Oro and the nobility of Naples. I won't attempt to say it in Italian. Uh But if there are links to similar types of information for the Spanish, if you could send me that too, that would be great. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll see what I can, what I can dig up. (laughs) All right. Well, that was, that that would be great. Well, thank you again. This has been fantastic. Um, And I've already sent some people your way, or at least family search way, uh, who've who've been on my Facebook page and are kind of stumped someplace. And, uh, a lot of them don't go back as far, but I've, I've told them all. I've sent them the link and said, just make a reservation. It's a free consultation. You can't lose. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's fun. And it's been so fun for us to meet people from all over the world and, and help them with their family history. All right. Well, thanks again, Debbie. All right. Thanks to you, Bob. Have a great day. All right. You too. Bye.